The quiet town, surrounded by a dense forest, which the locals called Blackfin, was known for its quiet streets and a small community where everyone knew each other. Blackfeather Woods, located on the outskirts of the city, always caused strange anxiety among the locals, although no one could explain why. The forest was old, wild and dense, its trees seemed to stretch towards each other, forming gloomy corridors above the paths, almost not letting in light. But by and large, it was an ordinary place where you could have a picnic or take a walk in the afternoon. However, as dusk fell, the forest came to life in the eyes of the townspeople, and few dared to go there alone. Over the past few years, this place has gradually become a source of rumors and fears. From time to time, people disappeared in the forest, most often tourists or visitors, who ignored local warnings that it was better not to wander unaccompanied in these places. Disappearances were rarely explained by anything specific. The police searched and organized raids with volunteers, but found only traces, discarded backpacks, torn clothes, and sometimes signs of a struggle. The townspeople discussed all this in the kitchens, in local bars, but no one could offer a single reasonable explanation. Each investigation ended in vain, and the fear of the forest only grew. Christopher was one of those cops who didn't really believe in rumors and mysticism. Young and ambitious, he grew up in the city, and always considered all these stories to be just attempts to explain what people do not want to admit, carelessness. Someone turned off the trail and got lost, he told friends when they brought up the topic of the forest. But despite this, even he felt a little uneasy when he received calls related to Blackfeather Woods. One cold autumn evening, when the day was already waning, a strange call came to the police station. The man on the other end of the line spoke quickly and breathlessly, as if he was running, and his voice was trembling, as if he was on the verge of panic. I'm in the forest, at Blackfeather Woods. I need someone, me. I do not know how to explain it. Please send someone. Christopher, who was on duty that evening, answered the call. He tried to calm the man down, but he just kept muttering something about they're coming for him, and that no one should come here. The connection was cut off. Attempts to call back were unsuccessful. The operators reported the approximate location of the call, which led into the depths of the forest. Usually such calls were accompanied by the hysteria of lost tourists or teenagers who decided to take a walk at night. Christopher, who was used to such situations, decided that this was just another joke or a simple panic. But something about that call was different. He couldn't help feeling anxious as he packed up his gear and moved out to Blackfeather Woods. One question was spinning in his head. What did this man see there? However, Christopher did not believe that everything would turn out to be as scary as the caller described. He accepted it as part of his job to find, calm, and bring home someone who was lost in the night forest. Christopher walked along a narrow path, illuminating the road with a flashlight, which pulled out only small patches of ground from the darkness under his feet. The forest around was quiet, except for the occasional crackle of dry branches somewhere in the distance when the wind made the trees move. He continued to delve into Blackfeather Woods, occasionally calling the caller on the radio, but there was no answer. It seemed that the forest had swallowed up all the sounds, leaving only a ringing silence. A few minutes later, he came across something strange. There were signs of a struggle from the edge of the path, broken branches, torn pieces of cloth on bushes, and what especially alarmed him, footprints that, judging by the shape, could belong to the person who called. But the strangeness was that there were other footprints nearby, deeper ones, as if something had been dragged along the ground. He shone his flashlight on this ominous picture. His inner voice began to scream about the danger, but the habit of doing his duty was stronger. He decided to follow the tracks that led deeper into the forest. With every step he took, he felt as if the forest was shrinking around him. The trees were getting denser and the air was colder. Christopher walked, making sure not to lose track. After a few hundred meters, he came across a small camp, a tent, a fire pit, and scattered belongings. It looked like someone was hurriedly leaving the place, leaving everything in a mess. But there was no man. Christopher tried to get in touch with the radio again, but there was only static in response. 
At that moment, he noticed something on the ground, a mobile phone. The screen was broken, but it was turning on. The last number dialed was the police station. This is the same phone from which the same call came. The man who called was here somewhere. But where did he go? Looking around the camp, Christopher found another strange detail. Not only personal belongings were scattered around the campfire, but also strange notes written in different handwriting. Some of them were fresh. Others had obviously been here for a long time. Don't come here. If you're reading this, leave. They're here, and they're watching. He didn't have time to comprehend when he heard the crackling of branches behind him. Turning around instantly, he illuminated the dark trees, but saw nothing. The strong feeling that he was being watched was growing. Christopher slowly retreated to the tent, holding the walkie-talkie to his ear. The same white noise. He tried to call his colleagues at the station, but the connection was completely cut off. He didn't want to stay here any longer than necessary. Something was wrong. There were no signs of a struggle other than the ones he had found earlier, but someone had been here quite recently. And this feeling, as if he was not alone, was growing by the minute. Then he noticed another detail. Something glittered in the bushes. Christopher cautiously came closer and saw a small knife with dried blood on the blade. Christopher froze, staring at the knife, which was covered with dried blood. His hand involuntarily reached for the walkie-talkie, but a voice inside his head told him, something is wrong here. He decided not to take the knife, but this item added even more questions to an already ominous situation. Everything around was gloomy and saturated with some inexplicable tension, as if nature had stopped breathing in this place. He looked around, the trees around him were motionless, and even the wind seemed to have disappeared. Suddenly, a soft, barely audible sound came from the depths of the forest. Christopher tensed, listening. It was a kind of rustle, as if something heavy was moving on the ground, pulling something like a bag behind it. He moved towards the sound, trying to move quietly, but his every step seemed deafening in the deathly silence of the forest. The rustling grew louder and soon he saw a shadow flicker between the trees. Christopher turned the light towards the source of the sound, and the beam of the flashlight illuminated the figure. It was a man, in tattered clothes almost naked, with long disheveled hair crawling on the ground. His hands were tied in front, and there were traces of burns and deep wounds on his legs. He couldn't walk, he crawled, exhaling hoarse moans through clenched teeth. Christopher froze momentarily paralyzed by the sight of this exhausted man. Hey, he shouted, heading towards the man. I'll help you. But as soon as he approached, the stranger who had seemed on the verge of consciousness before, abruptly raised his head and screamed with inhuman horror. They're coming, don't touch me. Run before it's too late. Christopher froze in place, his heart racing. He tried to ask who they were, but the man seemed to sink into a state of panic and hysteria. His body was twitching convulsively, and his eyes were full of terror that he couldn't put into words. Then, quite unexpectedly, he turned around and began to crawl faster, trying to hide in the depths of the forest, as if he knew that there was very little time left. Christopher wanted to follow him, but something stopped him. A strange, muffled noise came from the forest. Far ahead there was a sound like a roar, only not of an animal, but of something much more sinister. It was a deep and lingering sound that made the ground tremble under his feet and froze the blood in his veins. An instinctive fear gripped his body, fear of the unknown that was waiting for him in the depths of the forest. He knew he had to come back, but his professional duty was stronger than his instinct for self-preservation. He had to find out what happened to the person who called for help. He moved on, following the footsteps of the one he was trying to save. Christopher hardly paid attention to the noises around him anymore. There were too many of them. Every branch, every crackle and rustle seemed to be part of something bigger, as if the forest was coming to life under his feet. It took about half an hour before he came across another clearing. There was another campfire here, but instead of the usual camp items, he saw an eerie scene. Several old, partially destroyed tents, in the center of which lay things, photographs and notes spread out on the ground. There were signs of a struggle in some of the tents. 
Some of the notes had strange symbols and illegible notes, clearly written in a state of panic. Christopher picked up one of the notes, and his heart skipped a beat as he read the text. Don't look at their faces. If you've seen them, they're already looking at you. Other notes were also filled with panic and despair. You can't run away. They will always find you. Don't try to understand. Just go away. He began to quickly scan through the recordings, trying to find at least some clue that would explain what had happened here. In one of the tents, he found several photographs showing people having fun relaxing in the forest. These faces looked happy. They were surrounded by nature, but the last few photos made him feel cold. They depicted people in panic, their faces distorted with horror, and behind them there were shadows that are barely distinguishable in the pictures. Christopher felt goosebumps run over his skin. Who or what was watching them? And was what happened really just the result of an accident or something more? He took a step back, but then he heard that roar again, only much closer. His heart skipped a beat. The sound was unnatural, too loud, too harsh for an ordinary forest. It seemed to come from everywhere. And at that moment he realized that he was no longer alone in this forest. Christopher froze, his mind clinging to the last crumbs of logic and rationality. But the forest no longer seemed like an ordinary place to him. There was an atmosphere of overwhelming horror around. He knew he couldn't let fear paralyze him anymore. We need to move? But where? His gaze swept over the half-burned tents and photographs again, but these images did not provide answers. They only added questions. Suddenly, a new sound appeared in the air, and it was unlike anything I had heard before. It was a low, heavy rumble, as if the earth itself had begun to sing an eerie, menacingly quiet song. The vibration of that hum was felt in his bones. Christopher felt his every movement become difficult, as if the forest was trying to hold him in place. Looking around, he couldn't find the source of the sound, but he couldn't get rid of the feeling that it was coming. It became clear to him that he had to run, but now it has become a difficult task. His legs felt like they were filled with lead, and every step required enormous effort. Nevertheless, he headed back to where he came from, trying not to pay attention to the fact that the forest began to literally breathe around him. The trees that had been standing motionless a moment ago now seemed alive, as if they were watching his every move. He had almost crossed the clearing when suddenly another figure appeared in front of him, literally out of nowhere. This time, it was a middle-aged man. He stood motionless, as if dissolved in the surrounding darkness, but his eyes were open, lifeless, staring into the distance. A rusty axe was clutched in his hands. Christopher stopped instinctively, not daring to make an unnecessary move. Who are you? He croaked, but the man did not react in any way. He looked like a living corpse. His clothes were torn and stained with mud. There were traces of old wounds on his face, as if he had spent a long time fighting for his life. Christopher tried to speak again, but the words stuck in his throat. The man still stood motionless, with only a slight, almost imperceptible sway, but then, like lightning, his body jerked forward. The axe flew into the air, and Christopher barely managed to jump aside to avoid the blow. He screamed, but his scream was drowned out in the unnatural silence of the forest. The man lunged again, his eyes still blank, but his movements became more aggressive and faster. Christopher dodged with difficulty, his heart pounding so hard that he could hardly breathe. He was aware that he was on the verge of survival. One more moment of confusion, and it would all be over. His strength was running out, but luck still smiled on him. The man stumbled over a tree root and lost his balance for a moment. It was enough for Christopher to rush in the opposite direction. He ran as fast as he could, his legs carrying him deep into the forest, away from the unimaginable nightmare. But the forest seemed like an endless maze where every step only confused him more. The rustling became louder again, this time not behind, but in the side of the forest, as if something was moving parallel to his route. And once again, that strange feeling that he was being followed returned. The forest was literally a living thing that he was fighting. A new shadow flickered to the left. It was a woman, just as emaciated in tattered clothes, but she moved strangely as if she was not walking, but sliding, and her whole body was tense, as if ready for an attack. Christopher ran again, not understanding the road, 
barely discerning the path in front of him. There was only one thought in my head, to get out, at any cost. At some point, he ran out of breath into another clearing, but it did not bring relief. The remains of a campfire and broken branches were visible on it, as if someone had recently passed through here. In the center of the clearing, there were abandoned backpacks and several more notes, on one of which he noticed a new line. You're not the first, you're not the last one, don't look back. His hands were shaking, he could barely hold the note. Don't look back? Why? But this question soon disappeared, when once again that same rumble came from the depths of the forest. This time very close, as if something huge was moving through the forest, breaking branches and trunks. The ground shook under his feet, and fear surged with renewed force. Christopher decided not to delay any longer. He took off and ran without looking back, following the instructions exactly. The forest in front of him was getting darker, as if the surrounding trees had closed in, but somewhere ahead he saw a faint glimmer of light, perhaps an exit, just to get there. Don't look back, just run forward. But suddenly he heard a sharp crackling sound behind him as if something was approaching with incredible speed. Instinctively, he turned his head and looked over his shoulder, breaking a promise to himself, and what he saw made his blood run cold. Through the trees, at an unnatural speed, a mass of shadows was approaching, the silhouettes of which were distorted and unnatural. Christopher realized that there was nowhere else to run. His legs were shaking with fear and fatigue, but his mind was desperately looking for a way out. These shadows, these creatures, they moved quickly and silently, taking over the space behind him. He knew that if he stopped, the end would be inevitable. All instincts screamed of imminent danger, but rational thinking faded under the pressure of fear. He abruptly turned off the path, trying to hide behind the nearest trees. Lying on the ground, he frantically tried to slow down his breathing, listening to every rustle. The forest was alive, as if all nature in this place had united with something terrible, inevitable. The shadows no longer moved from behind. They disappeared. But the feeling of danger did not leave him for a second. Suddenly, a few meters away from him, he heard a faint rustling. The forest began to make those strange, barely discernible sounds again, which made the blood run cold. He tried to peer through the trees, but saw only dark silhouettes writhing in the distance. At that moment, he realized that they were playing with him. They were somewhere nearby, and knew he was there. They watched him, testing his patience like predators before attacking their prey. Christopher, trying to keep his cool, quietly pulled out a knife from his pocket, the one he had not taken at the camp. He thought that this was probably his last resort. All he could do was hold on a little longer. But suddenly, there was a whisper from behind the trees. It wasn't a human voice. It was something muffled, inarticulate, as if nature had spoken to itself. Do you think you've escaped? said the darkness. Those words were like punches slamming into his mind. He didn't know where they were coming from, but it was as if they were being heard right in his head. Fear filled every cell of his body. He couldn't stay still anymore. Christopher jumped to his feet and losing all control, ran deep into the forest. He no longer chose the path, did not think about where he was running. His mind was shrouded in panic and all he wanted to do was escape from that ominous whisper. He ran for a long time, without stopping, until he felt his legs give way treacherously. His breathing was ragged, and his heart was pounding so hard in his chest that it seemed like it was about to stop. Christopher fell to his knees, looking back into the darkness. Everything was quiet. It's too quiet. It was that deathly silence that sharpened the sense of impending doom. Suddenly he noticed something glittering ahead. It was a shiny metal object something like a locket or jewelry lying on the ground. He approached it carefully and picked it up. It was a bracelet stained with blood with the initials SL engraved on it. This item was familiar. It belonged to the very man who relayed the call, the one who called for help. It was at this moment that Christopher realized that there would be no end. All these things, all these people, they all disappeared here as if they had disappeared into this forest. And it seems that this is exactly what awaits him. He will never know the truth. No one will ever find him, just like those who came before him. And then he heard a slow, heavy step behind him. His breathing froze. 
The body was paralyzed with horror. He didn't try to escape anymore. He just stood there, staring straight ahead, clutching the bloody bracelet in his hands. The footsteps were getting closer. Christopher closed his eyes as if it could protect him from the inevitable. Silence enveloped the forest again, order, but she was just an illusion of security. The last thing Christopher heard was a faint, barely discernible rustling and a cold, dead whisper right behind him. We found you, 